am going to create a new art journal from this photographic memory scrapbook that I got at Goodwill. I started this in my last live session, but I did not have time to actually do a page. And I do want to start this. I took apart the binding, which is really convenient. The holes are already punched in here, and it has the little sprocket binding pieces here and a tie with tassels on the end of it. I'm going to hold those off until I complete everything in here. And what I'm going to do is several months ago, I started a project called Fine Line Fun, where I was doing little tutorials on designs that you can create with your fine line paint applicators. And I want to revive that tutorial lesson. And that's what I intend this to be, is a series of just little lesson examples of what you can do with the fine line paint applicators and designs that you can draw on your pages. This will be more like a little sample book and I'll probably refer to this too as I'm working on different things. So what is a fine line paint applicator? These are the ones that I use. These are both standard tip 18 gauge nozzles. The nozzles have little wire pieces in here and they come in different gauges. The 18 gauge is a standard nozzle and it gives a standard medium line. You can also get it in a fine tip and you can tell the difference between the two with the color of the cap. The, the 20 gauge, which is the fine tip, has a blue cap. The 18 gauge has a yellow cap. This is just a little bit smaller of the little wire that goes in there. And you can write lines with that just a little bit easier. I will primarily be using the 18 gauge of these. Now there are different types of paint applicators out on the market. These just happen to be the ones that I enjoy working with. I learned about these from Gina Ahrens a couple years ago. I like them. I like them that they can be refilled. When I'm done with the paint, I can just clean out the nozzle and, and fill it with a different color of paint if I wish. I am starting to get a few more of these. When I first started out, I had two of them, one for black and one for white. And for the longest time, I only had two, black and white. But I am starting to collect more of them, so I will be filling them with more colors. I get these retail at Hobby Lobby. In my Hobby Lobby, I find them in the aisle where they sell the model car parts. And you can fill these with different types of media. I fill them with craft paint. That is what I like to use in here. And it's because of the type of projects that I am doing. I like the craft paint because it dries matte. My pages don't stick together. But you can put metallic paint in here. You can put uh, liquid acrylic in here. You can put matte medium, glossy medium. And I would imagine, I can't speak for the model car makers, but I think they probably use it to, especially the fine tip, because it has that longer nozzle here. They use it to glue the tiny pieces of their model car together. So what I'm going to do is work on some pages here. I'm just going to do some basic designs. This paper is black. It's meant for a photograph album. I like that it is black because my whites 
and yellows will show up on here nice. The blue, my blue might show up. It's, it's a pretty blue. We'll see. The brown's probably not as much, but we'll see. If you're working on a darker paper, use a lighter color. If you're working on a lighter paper, use a darker color. But we're going to start out with the white. Let's get these others out of the way. And I am just going to pull a paper out. I might do a couple of samples here. And then in my other videos, as I get working on this, I may do some more. I'll be working on one page, go to the next page, then backtrack and work on this page. So, I'm going to use the white. And you can see it has a cap that unscrews here. Now, this is one of the first applicators that I purchased. And you can see the label has long since been worn off. It's been handled and loved <laughs> over the years. And I do like it that these last for a long time. I do wash out my nozzles, but they do they do get stained. I should probably soak these in Clorox. That would clean this bottle off really nice. And I'll do that when I get to a good stopping point. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom in just a tiny bit more so that you can get a, a really good view of this paper. I am going to do a really basic design on here. When I get started using one of these fine line paint applicators, I unscrew the cap and then I'll just take the cap and move that little wire piece up and down through the nozzle several times just to make sure that the nozzle is clear, that there's nothing blocking it, plugging it up. And then over on a scratch piece of paper or a palette or whatever you're using, I'll squeeze out a line of paint just to make sure that it is flowing nice. Now you will see I'm going to do a very basic design. If you watch my channel a lot, you will have seen this several times when I'm using the fine line paint applicator. And what I like to do is what I call a lattice design. And all it is is diagonal lines across the page. Don't worry if your lines aren't completely straight. It's okay. <laughs> this is just an art journal page and you are just making a sample. Now I think I will end my samples right here and keep this for writing and documentation. That might be varying widths on different pages depending on the design that I'm doing. But let's continue with the lattice piece here. Just about an inch apart, but not always. It depends on what you're working on. Now, if you notice, when I first put down my nozzle and start to squeeze out the paint, it gives that little dot of a paint. And sometimes I use that to my advantage, but it's it's there. It's just there. You can go through that line again and try to smooth it out a little as you're doing the cross hatches, but and I have done designs where I take advantage of that and I'll show you some of those as I work on the different samples. So this is just a basic lattice. Nothing to it. You see this done a lot in doodling and zentangles and it, it, it's not what I would call original. But I am creating it with my fine line paint applicator. As I'm working, the little paint accumulates right there on the tip of the nozzle. I'll just take a towel or rag or whatever and wipe that off. Now I'm going to get creative with this. Maybe I'll divide this in half, right down almost half. I'll just put, well, not half, maybe two-thirds. 
I'm going to put a line right here. Because I want to show you, this is the basic design here. I like to get fancy with it, and I like to do these little dots on the sides of these diamonds. And this is really inspired by needlework. I have done a lot of crochet in the past, thread crochet, and these are really in thread crochet called picots, P-I-C-O-T-S, it's a French word. But I think that they make it really fancy. And I try to get one on every slide of the diamond, but I do know if I have an entire page of these lattice designs, I do miss some. But that's okay. <laughs> it's all good. But look how look how fun this is. And look how it it really does make this design go from a basic plane to a, a fancy, almost a lacy look. And there are other things that you can do that are inspired by thread knitting, needle knitting, crochet work. How fun this is. Let's put a couple down here. Maybe one up here. And you can even make it more fancy and do something in here. But I kind of want to keep my first lesson, my first sample basic. And this probably is a variation of a basic because it's diamonds instead of squares. Maybe on the back, I'll do a basic just square or rectangles. You can do a lot of different things. I'm going to document this. I'm just going to name it. And notice, I'm even writing with this. It does take some practice to learn how to write with these. But as the more you use them, the better you'll get at it. And if you're just starting out, I would say get some construction paper. If you're going to do something like this, just go to your local Dollar Tree, your craft store, buy a packet of colored construction paper, a packet of dark black construction paper, something that you don't mind if you mess up <laughs> so and if you're practicing writing I would say even practice on a piece of newspaper something that that can be tossed so I'm just going to call this a basic lattice L A T T T I and I guess I'll date it. Today is the 19th. Why don't I do this? Just for fun. I'm going to turn my page. I'm not sure this entire page is in your view, but where I write will probably be in your view. I'm just going to sign my name. Just to show you how fun it is to write with these. And then I'm going to put eight. I do like to date my work because I find that's a nine. I find that several years later, I wonder when I did this. And this is just a sample piece, but it's, it's fun to document it. Now, you know what? I have a little square here that I can really take advantage of. And instead of doing the sample on the back of the squares. I'm going to do them right here. Just draw a square with my fine line paint applicator like that. 
and draw some squares. Now this isn't totally lattice. I suppose you could see a lattice with just squares, but mostly lattice work goes diagonally. But who says? Who says that we can't have square lattice work? <laughs> How fun this is. And you're just playing with what you can do with your fine line paint applicator. I'm going to leave it at that. To, well, am I going to leave it at that? I like to border things. Let's put a border up here. And I'll just, I'll just take my paint applicator. Sometimes you can just let it drizzle. I don't know if you can tell here. I'm really kind of holding my paint applicator in this case above. The, the nozzle is really above the page. It's not touching the page and I'm just letting that ink paint flow out on the very edge of this page. And it's not perfect. It's not meant to be perfect. But I like the, I even like the little dots where I reconnect it. It just gives it a a textured feel to it. My, the tip of the nozzle is not touching the paper. It's just flowing out of the nozzle onto the very, very edge of this page. Now this paint is very wet. Craft paint does dry fast, but when you have like the dots that are created in those picots and when you have a nice thick line that's coming out, like what I'm doing on the borders, that paint is still wet. Once you do something like this, I'm not going to do this edge because it'll go into the side of the book. Once you do something like this, remove it, put it in a safe place where you won't bump it or smudge it. Like, see, I already smudged this eight here. So that's my very first sample. Just a basic lattice design. I got a little fancy in the middle, but this is diagonal and these are squares. How fun that is. Let's move it aside. I'll come back later and do one on the back so that I can fill this entire book. I'm going to do another one. And let's just kind of wipe off the tip of this. I do like to wash these nozzles out frequently. I'll unscrew the cap here and this one is ready to be washed out. But after I get done using these, I'll take it under the utility sink and wash out. Just let that cool water flow through here. Maybe take a q-tip and kind of swipe out that paint. Take the cap put it in to the nozzle and move it up and down like this. Move it up and down. Get it while that water's running in there. The water will flow down as you move it down and water is flowing into here, flowing to the nozzle and as you're moving your cap up and down, that will clean out the shaft of this nozzle. This one is ready. This is one of my original fine line paint applicators. It's ready to be cleaned out and soaked in some Clorox. Get all this off of here. It has been lovingly used. Now I do like to work with different colors. Let's try just for fun. Let's try this bright green. And I'm going to do another basic design. This is one of my newer fine line paint applicators. I got a little green on here when I was filling it. I filled this one online in my live session and it's kind of hard to stand up and fill these. <laughs> I'll do a little segment later on in this tutorial to show you how I fill them. But just kind of move that cap up and down to be sure that that nozzle is clear. And you can feel it. If that nozzle is not clear, this little 
shaft of the cap on the cap will really be hard to move up and down. Now and then I take my I take my paint applicator over on the piece of scratch paper and squeeze the paint through. Now we're gonna do another basic one. And I'm wanting to do bricks, but I think I'll hold off because I'm using green. I don't want green bricks. So I think what I'm going to do is you can play with these. Scribble. Just scribble. Scribble like you were a kid. Now, can you hear the, the nozzle scrape on my page? You do that too much. Look at, look at the... Look at the blob of paint on the tip. That's why I like to just take your towel and wipe it off. If you do this too much while you've got wet paint on there, you will build up paint on the tip of these, and it can clog up on you. So I, when I'm doing something like this, where I'm going back through paint that's already wet paint that's already on the page, kind of hold your fine line paint applicator above the paper. I switch to the yellow. This is another newer one. I'm starting to buy more of these. I do like to have a, a nice assortment of them. I'm building up my collection. Now I can tell just by going like this that this nozzle is really clean. I don't have any trouble moving that cap up and down through the shaft of that. But it's new. <laughs> you can mix the colors on here. Now, I would not recommend pulling this yellow nozzle through that thickness of that green paint. Uh, if you're going to do that, let it dry. That's just my, my feeling on that. I'm just going to let this flow out, and I'm going to do the scribble again. I'm just going to be a kid and scribble. Okay. So you got two colors of, of paint on there. This is a little paintbrush. I'm going to use the end of it. And you can come through while that paint is still wet. Now, I'm, you could do this with the your nozzle of your fine line paint applicator. But just be aware that if you do, you're going to potentially clog up that little nozzle. And then you'll have to clean it out. Or you can use a straight pen. And I do have some straight pens that are not clean. <laughs> I have I have drugged them through paint before. Uh, you can use this side, but I'm going to try using the top of it and just bring that paint down. Play with it. Let's let's use this side a little more. See what you can do with this? Now this is getting away from the basic design because this is getting a little bit fancier. But I couldn't resist. This is taking a basic design, a basic scribble design, and artsing it up. But notice the the colors that the, the green and yellow are kind of mixing together where I'm doing that. How fun this is. Just a way that you can work with these. Let's do it. I'm just going to try to do these swirly designs on the inside with where the ye yellow is. And let the green lines be the basic lines. And let this border be the border. That's my, that's my take on this. <laughs> So just some fun ways, fun ways that you can play with these fine line paint applicators. I'm wanting to go in there, but that would be breaking my own rule. <laughs> By the way, this is my one of my studio mascots, Penelope, Penelope, and she is really my little desk mascot. I really wouldn't call her a muse, but she's always there watching, making sure that I'm doing something right. 
Okay, I'm going to go back to the white here. Let's just close this up. To close it up, you just take the little cap. Hopefully I can do this. Kind of rest this nozzle on your forefinger or your hand. and put. Sometimes I have to get it up to my eyes to make sure that that little wire piece in the cap goes into the shank of the nozzle. There. Maybe kind of bounce it up and down through the nozzle, clean it out. I'm going to go back to the white and oh, I want to put some, I want to put some dots in here. <laughs> Just playing with it. That's the fun of these. Now this went from a very basic scribble to more of a enhanced design. An enhanced scribble. That's what I'll call it. Basic scribble. Enhanced basic scribble. <laughs> so let's call it basic And then I'm going to put a comma, and down here I'm going to put enhanced. Did you see I got some white down there? Never fails when I'm doing something like this, I mess it up. Maybe I can just kind of, well, let's put a border on this. Let's, now, I got wet paint here. You have to be aware when you do something like this, if this isn't dry, you can put your hand in there and smudge it. So what I want to do is just like a little basic loopy doodle. And all I have in here, again, is craft paint, what I am using. I do not, at this point, I do not mix anything in here. This is not diluted with water or any type of media. When I very first started out, I was adding airbrush medium. But I found that it really, when you add a media to it, whether it's matte medium or gloss medium or airbrush medium you are thinning the paint and I like when I do something like that I really do like my nice thick lines with my paint now I have a square in here so let's just let's just have some more fun with it we're going to do some basic scribbles in here Just as if a kid would come in and scribble on the page. Okay? And of course, you can get fancy with your scribbles, too. So there are two basic designs. Should I do one more? I feel like doing one more. We'll do three of them in this session. And this is going to be another another lattice design but I'm going to show you some floral with it and so I'm going to call this basic lattice with floral and here again I'm just drawing the diagonals across the page keep your hands out of the paint if you can I think I'll end it there about 
here. Doesn't have to be straight if you get a little nozzle, a little puddle in there because you had to restart the design. Don't worry about it. It just adds some texture and in the very end, in the very end, it works out. A lot of this you will see if you just go to the store and look at curtains. Look at the, your sheer curtains, and sometimes they have thread designs in there. Just really inspires one, or you don't even have to go to the store to, to, to look at them. Just go on Pinterest or Google sheer curtains or Google Lace. Google Lace, and you will really get inspired. Okay, let's draw a vertical line down this way, sort of a vertical line. Then I want to go diagonally this way. Here's another hint. If you don't want these little puddles at the beginning of your line, if you can, start your line off of the page, let it flow across the page, and end your line off of the page. That way the puddles will happen off of the borders of your page. You can't always do that, but if you're working across an entire page like I am here, it will work. Now it won't work when I get to the border here. You know, I have a little puddle there. But that's okay. Those those can be used in your design and I'll show you some of those later. Don't worry if your if your diagonals are not the same size because to tell you the truth if you look at a tablecloth on a table or curtain on the window theoretically all those little diamonds are the same size but because it's fabric you know fabric is very flexible it will move and shift and those little diagonals will get squeezed and pulled and stretched and pull different directions. Visually, they will not be the same size. If I move the paper now, it will smear on the underside with these wet lines. And I could wait for these to dry, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to hope my paper doesn't move. And I want to do some little flowers in here. And that's why I'm going to call it a floral. And I'm just going to draw some four petal flowers across here. That's a large one. We might want to go to a smaller one. You might want to do different sizes. Let's do a large one here. And you could do it very randomly, or you could, could um, do one on it in every intersection. This depends on what you're trying to accomplish. You could do, let's get a small one, maybe in here. You could just do little dots. I like those. Maybe in between the large and small ones. That one kind of. How about that? That was fun. Now you can come out over here and add a border. Let's just do a loopy border here. And this is something really kind of like a little trim, fabric trim. Let's put some picots on it, little picots, little dots. How fun this is.
So I would recommend for you to, if you're interested in this, if you maybe have some fine line paint applicators and you've been meaning to play with them but you just haven't done it yet, uh, get out some craft paint. Craft paint is not expensive, all the way from 50 cents to a dollar and a half maybe, two dollars for a bottle of nicer craft paint. Get out your, go to the store, get some construction paper, do some basic, play around with it. Let's call this lattice with floral. I will say too, and I'm starting to notice it here, as you use your paint and as it lowers in the bottle, you may have to squeeze a little bit harder or allow this paint bottle to sit vertically with the tip pointing down. If there's not much paint in here, you have to, as with any plastic bottle that you're squeezing paint through, you'll have to have a certain amount of pressure to get that paint through or whatever media you have in there. Lattice with floral. Let's just do a, let's just do a little one down here. How fun this has been and you can kind of just go on and on and on with different designs let's put a border around it for well let's date it I'm gonna put 8 19 2017 Now, I'm not going to turn my paper. I'm going to turn my hand a little, maybe. Probably got some white on the back of that, but that's okay. I'm going to call this one finished. I want to put a border around here, but I want this to dry. Let's see if I can lift this up and move it over. And let's just see that look even on my paper here, how those little dots are not completely dry. And as I move my towel across there, you can see how it smears. So, these are my three, three designs that I did in this video. Just I'll show them to you one at a time. This one is the basic lattice design, where it's just diagonals going this way, some little coast stitches in there to make it fancy and here's a square lattice the next one that I did was this scribble design where I scribbled with different colors of course I could not just leave it a basic scribble I had to go in and use the back end of my paintbrush and do some fancy marks on the inside lines, just the inside yellow lines. Here I did the basic scribble design here. And around the border, I just did a loopy design around the border in white. And the last sample that I did in this video is 
what I'm calling lattice with floral where I just did the diagonal lines for the lattice to create the little diamonds and then I went in with little star florals here of different sizes, a smaller one and a larger one and some little dots. And here's a sample of it down here. So how fun this has been. How fun to create with these and there's a lot more that can be done with these fine line paint applicators. This is just a little reference book of samples. I'll be doing some more videos showing you different things that you can do. I hope that you've enjoyed this and I will see you on the next page.